Only one more sleep until the Winnipeg Jets get out there on the ice against Minnesota for the first time in postseason play since the 2015 season. We are waiting for Mark Shifley to come. Oh, he's on the phone now asking you shall receive. Mark, no can you hear us? Waiting. Yeah, I can hear you guys. All right, we're live, Mark. We appreciate us. the time. Thanks for this, man. Um, no, no problem. What's, uh, what's playoff eve like for you? Like just some video games, a little Fortnite? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no Fortnite for me. Um, you know, just woke up from a nap, actually. Um, my roommate uh, brought me home a smoothie, actually. Oh, nice. So, uh, you know, just relaxing. Um, you know, eat some good food. Make sure you get a, you get a, a good, healthy meal yep, in us carbs. tonight. And then, carbs are uh, big. Carbs are big. Yep. Carbs are always big. Good carbs. Yep. But, uh you know, not just a lot, just a lot of relaxing, and then uh, early bedtime. Uh, obviously, you guys have one of the best fan bases in all of the NHL. We were watching one of the hype videos that the team sent out earlier. Chris Jericho providing the soundtrack to it. Uh, have you been able to feel the city kind of rise as it begins, and the whiteout will will eventually come tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know, just over the last you know, over the last two weeks, I think they've just been ready for the playoffs to start already. You know, that's been kind of all the talk um, around town. Um, I know they're shutting down one of the streets on, on game days, one of the pretty important streets downtown too. So, um, you know, it's exciting to, it's exciting to hear that. And actually, it actually snowed today too. So I think, uh, you know, the weather's even uh, getting ready for the, white, for the whiteout. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's a whiteout everywhere you look. Nice. Um, <laughs> when you, uh, let's go back to 2015. I know you guys don't want to go back to 2015, but I, I think, you know, are, are there things you can pull from that time, Mark, as you go into a postseason where the expectations seem to be very different, obviously, this time around? Um, I think you always can take um, – you know, any, any experience you have like that, you can always take, uh, you know, learning lessons and, um, and stuff from that. Obviously, our team's changed a lot since, um, you know, since then. Um, but there are, there are uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of guys a part of it as well. So, I think from that time, we've, you know, we've all learned, we've all – um, we all experienced something, and then you know, even this year, you know, and every year since, actually, you, know, you go through those different adversities throughout the season. You go through injuries, you go through um, good times, bad times, um, and that just that experience every year, um, in my opinion, is so is so helpful. You know, that's what you know like the Sydney Crosby's of the world have gone through. You know, um, you know, obviously they've been really successful lately, but they went through the they went through the downs too, and and they came on stronger. And I think. Um, you know, that's when we're looking to um, take it to the last time and bring it into this time. So you've played uh, four playoff games since leaving Barry. Uh, some of the players on this team uh, haven't played since junior and or the NCAA. Is there any way to prepare yourself for what's about to come? Um, you know, obviously, you know, just taking care of your body, you know, getting your rest, doing doing all the, all the stuff that, you know, professional athletes should do. Um, but other than that, you know, it's just you gotta you gotta enjoy it. You know, you can't be too tense. You can't you can't uh, um, you know play the game like um, you know every second matters and every play matters. You gotta you gotta just play. You gotta just play the way you know how to play. Play what play the way that got you and your team there. And you know, obviously, it's gonna be intense. There's gonna be um, a lot at stake. But you know, I think for our team, we just have to focus on on what we on uh, you know what got us here, what got us to this point, and what. What uh, what part of our game we need to we need to you know be the, be our best at and just go from there. As I was asking, I'm thinking like in my head, you know what? This guy's probably been pe preparing since the Dutchman, since the the Kitchener Junior Rangers. Like it's, it's kind of <laughs> something that you've been waiting for all your life, I guess, right? Oh, for sure. I, I didn't. I didn't even good uh, good research when I played for the Kitchener <laughs> Dutchman. But yeah, uh, my uh, old man played there. That's why I knew that way way back oh. in the day. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Um, it's something you dream of. It's uh, you know, it's so exciting, and especially playing in a place like Winnipeg, um, with the excitement that's uh, that's around this city, it, it definitely makes it very special. And um, you know, I think it's, it, it is some one of those things that you just have to enjoy. You know, you're a hockey player. You're doing something that you love to do every day, and um, you know, getting to play in the Stanley Cup playoffs is uh, is such an honor, and um, you got to enjoy every minute of it. Nice. You, uh, we, we talked to you prior to the season, and we asked you, playoffs are bust, right? And you go, oh, yeah, playoffs are bust. Were you expecting franchise record for points or bust? Like, did you see this kind of year? You guys had a feeling you were going to be better, obviously, but did you see this year coming? Um, you know, I'm sure. Um, it's, you know, I, I think we all knew we had a good team and we had the, the pieces to, 
um, to make it something special and make it something that you know could be could be um, something big. Um, but we, I think, everyone was kind of unsure of how it was going to all play out, and how um, how everything was going to mesh together, and um, you know, I think you know, big kudos to to Blake Wheeler. He he did a great job of you know bringing this team together and and you know making making us and helping us just get to the point of you know being consistent in our game and knowing knowing no matter if we have a bad game or a bad shift or a bad period that you know we knew how to play a game that that was that could be successful and um, and then we did that all season you know we went through we went through a ton of injuries um, throughout the whole year you know me included. And um, you know, it always seemed like we we came back stronger. The team um, rallied around you know every you know every adversity to um, and make make something good out of it and make it um, you know make this good thing keep going. And um, you know, I think that's uh, that's what that's what makes a good team is that character. Uh, you mentioned Blake Wheeler, Mark. Obviously, he's been a huge part of this team. Uh, the story a couple of weeks ago, though, where he just wanted to fight everyone during practice. When you guys were <laughs> I was well, I wasn't during... there, Mark. Yeah. Obviously, you were. Like when when you when you see a guy that late in the year in the dog days, so to speak, try and be a bit of a spark on what should be a sleepy practice. Yeah, was he when, turning up the intensity? Yeah, when you see him doing that, turning up the intensity. I mean, what are, what are you thinking in that moment? Are you thinking, all right, this is kind of a smart move at this time of year? Um, you know, I wasn't really sure what to think of it, and um, you know, after you know, I knew it wasn't anything. It wasn't anything serious. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't something that was going to linger on. It was something that was, you know, hugged out after, um, you know, right after practice, and was forgot about that. You know, that very, that very second. And um, you know, Blake Wheeler's a you know tremendous competitor, and he, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve, and he works. You know, he works tremendously hard. You know, day in and day out, whether it's practice, working out. Um, during games, you know he's a he's just a competitor and um, you know gives it a, gives it a, gives it his all at all times and doesn't have that off switch and um, it was just one of those one of those bad days and um, you know now it's over and done with. There are a couple of high intensity games closing out that season. I guess it was five in a row and eleven of your last twelve that you won. Was that something you guys talked about about making sure the foot didn't come off the gas pedal and that the intensity stayed there because. I mean, watching from the outside, it, it seemed like you guys clicked into playoff mode about 12 games left in the season. Did it feel that way? Was it something you guys talked about? Yeah, it was definitely something that was that was talked about in the room and, and reiterated. You know, each and every game that we, you know, we don't want to get out of rhythm. We don't want to, you know, be, be complacent on where we're at. You know, just getting an X beside your beside your team's name in the standings, you know, means nothing. It's all about you know going into the playoffs, you know, feeling good and knowing that your team is feeling good and. Um, you know, I think that you know staying in the rhythm is such an important thing. You know, leaving the season, um, you know, just because it you know that it does ramp up, and you want to be comfortable in your game. Your team wants to be comfortable in the way they're the way they're playing, and um, you know, it was definitely something that was talked about. You know, every day. Well, you can tell, Mark. You're obviously playing a lot more hockey this time around than you were back in 2015. You played 60 games this year. Injuries were were a reason for that. But I'm just curious how how you're feeling right now physically. Considering how much hockey you do play when you're in there, and and when you get out, like how fresh are you right now uh, compared to other seasons? Yeah, I'm 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 feeling really good. Um, you know, obviously missing missing those games was not ideal in my mind. Um, you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't as planned, but you know, I came back stronger from them. And um, you know, obviously that that adversity is another experience that you learn from. You know, going through a big injury, it's, uh, it's never easy, but you learn and you. Uh, you figure out some more things about yourself, and um, obviously the team played played really well. But you know now I feel I feel awesome. Um, it's uh, it's an exciting time. So you know we've had a few days a few days to you know get some practices in the day off and in there as well. So the body's feeling uh, fresh and just ready to get out get after it. Uh, listen, I think a lot of people are ready to get after it. Let's get these playoffs started. Should be a special scene in Winnipeg. Uh, enjoy it. We'll be watching. Thanks a lot for taking the time and talking with us. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, there's Mark Shifley of the Winnipeg Jets.